Welcome once again. In this session, we are reading 1 Peter chapter 4. This chapter begins by talking about crucifying sin, and it ends with a very scary warning. But before I get into it, I just want to share how excited I am about getting into the rest of these books, 2 Peter, Jude, the epistles of John, and also the book of Revelation. It is going to be awesome. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Notice here, it does not say, since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, therefore, he suffered in our place, therefore, you know, we don't have to suffer at all. That's not what it says at all. Remember, uh, Paul, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Not that Christ took my place so that I don't have to. No, Christ was crucified so that I can identify with that. Let's read this again, verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that you no longer should live the rest of your life in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. Verse 3, for we have spent enough of our pastime doing the desire of the Gentiles and having walked in lewdness, lusts, drunken binges, orgies, carousings, and abominable idolatries. They think it is strange that you do not run with them into the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For to this end, the good news was preached even to the dead, that they might be judged indeed as men in the flesh, but live as to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound mind, self-controlled, and sober in prayer. And above all things, be earnest in your love among yourselves. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, employ it in serving one another as good managers of the grace of God in its various forms. If anyone speaks, let it be as it were the very words of God. If anyone serves, let it be as of the strength which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, don't be astonished at the fiery trial which has come upon you to test you, as though a strange thing happened to you. But because you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, rejoice, that at the revelation of His glory you also may rejoice with exceeding joy. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests on you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler in other men's matters. But if one of you suffers for being a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. Why would judgment begin with the household of God? Because it is the household of God has the responsibility for being the salt in this earth, for preserving the ancient morals, for preserving the society from going corrupt and immoral. As Jesus said, if the salt has lost its saltiness, it is thrown out good for nothing. Those are harsh words from the Lord himself. If the church has lost her saltiness, and I assure you, that much of the church in the West has lost her saltiness. She has traded her saltiness for sugar. Church leaders have traded the message of holiness and repentance and righteousness for self-help, positive messages, ear-tickling messages that get approval of men. If it begins first with us, what will happen to those who don't obey the good news of God? Quote, if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will happen to the ungodly and the sinner? And that is found in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. 
Think about this. God, through his mighty power and love and mercy, he delivered the children of Israel up out of Egypt. But out of all of those millions who came out of Egypt, only two got to the promised land. Only two. If the righteous are scarcely saved, what will it be like for the sinners? Verse 19, therefore let them also who suffer according to the will of God in doing good entrust their souls to him as to a faithful creator. Until next time, seek God with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.